One thing that I thought about last week is breaking even is underrated. Somebody will look and take like a like a snapshot of my trading service and they're like, well, Dave, you kind of sucked over this four or five month period. It's like, well, thanks for telling me that. I didn't know that. <laughs> But if I kind of broke even over that period, or at least sort of kept my head barely above the water, then that's setting me up for a possible success. And a lot of times, some people will look at something like that, and they'll fail to see that we just had a huge winner, which made the portfolio go up 15 or 20% or whatever the case may be. And now we're back to like grind it out mode. And that's just how it is. But lately, somebody is uh, on a private uh, message basis. I've been working with someone, uh, a client, and helping him do some crypto trading. And he was having a hard go of it. But overall, I think he was breaking even or make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little. And then he finally caught a big winner. And I think now it's beginning to click. And the other thing is a side note. As I said a minute ago, the crypto market, the bull bear cycles happen so quickly he came in after a great relative strength cycle where I was absolutely printing money. Go back and look at some of the weekly charts from, I guess, late last fall. And then now it's a little bit more grinded out. And every now and then you'll catch one like this. So obviously at its peak, which is no longer at its peak, it's, it's pulled back deeply, as you can see. But at its peak, he was up over 347%. And he was taking, I, I told him, he was saying, well, what do I do? And I was like, well, take profits at 100%. He goes, well, I'm already up 100%. <laughs> take profits at the next 100%. I'm like, well, yeah, why not? You know, take some, not all, but take, take a little bit off in case you get like a crazy spike move like this. You could put in a, let's say when it was at, uh, let's see, 47, he bought it at one, uh, he bought it at 47 cents if memory serves. So maybe put in like a 200% or 300% point where you'll take off just something small like a hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars or whatever and on these big spikes overnight you'll get paid anyway looking at my trading service there's one big one i wouldn't say big winner but decent winner it's up 50 percent so far 15 percent on the first loaf and 50 percent on the second so that's a decent winner maybe this rytm will turn into something maybe vtsi the SRUUF, I doubt that I'm going, to get, I'm going to get rich off of that trade. And a lot of clients didn't take it. I only have like 100 shares of it. Usually I'll take whatever's at least in here. And I will take these trades across multiple accounts. But I do try to set up a model to where if somebody says, hey, Dave, where'd you get in on VTSI? I could show them 800 shares at or around that entry point. And if they use a little discretion, I could show them why. And then maybe this one down here could be the next big winner. Getting back to breaking even is underrated. This is not to say that you want to aim low, like, ooh, I want to break even. No, you want to make 10,000% at least on your trades, but you don't want to accept mediocrity under the guise of chipping away at it. So that's what I'm getting at, is that you don't want to say, well, I'm break even, that's all I need to do. No, 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 you, you want to make a lot of money over time but over intervals of time, especially if you're new -er to trading, you will have a lot of downtime, you will have a lot of flat time, and then you'll actually have some drawdowns, obviously. Now, the good thing is, without getting too far sidetracked, imagine that. The good thing is, if you do go to a drawdown with trend following, then as long as you're more and more selective on your new positions, that drawdown should eventually stop. And you should, well, because your positions will stop out, right? So all your positions will stop out, worst case scenario. And then you just become super selective on putting on new ones if the market is just chopping around and you're not seeing a whole lot of setups. But do not accept mediocrity under the guise of chipping away at it. Anthony Bourdain, Bourdain once said that mediocrity is the greatest sin. And I've taken that ball and ran with it, run with it. Somebody needs to school me on that. <laughs> That's why it was so hard for me to learn uh, or try to learn at least foreign language, uh, languages, especially uh, my Italian, uh, just because I get all these little things mixed up. So anyway, but uh, don't accept mediocrity. Anthony Bourdain said that mediocrity was the greatest sin. And then I've taken that and I've expanded it into a, a fairly sizable topic which i'll eventually publish either through random charts or through a book i'm working on that i've been working on forever 
Now, again, don't aim low, but do learn how to wait for something and learn how to wait. And, and I guess a lot of trading is learning how to wait. And you need to find something to keep you busy. Ideally, you want to do some research and research, not, not holy grail type of research, but research what you're doing. Let's say you're trading Landry Light pullbacks. Well, then go in and find those 100 Landry Light pullbacks. Find them in choppy markets. Find them in trending markets. If you're really bored, go in and look at the archives. I'll give you a link to that in just one second. Somebody a couple of days ago threw up one. Uh, sounds kind of nasty. <laughs> he put one up in Facebook that was 20 years old and asked me what I thought about it. And I gave him my two cents, obviously. So make sure you have something to kind of bide your time in the meantime. Now, if you're working hard and following the process and grinding it out, then you're getting closer and closer and closer to the next big winners. And I had a, a cassette tape from a TAG conference, technical analysis group, which no longer exists. It was something else, and then it was something else, and then it became Traders Expo, I believe. It was kind of a pinch me moment. I attended a TAG in 90 something, early 90s. And then less than 10 years later, I was actually speaking at these things. But anyway, not to, <laughs> not to let my narcissism come out, but that was just kind of a pinch me moment. I'm excited for me for being able to do that. But anyway, from that conference, I walked away with a tape, a cassette tape from Mark Douglas. And in that tape, he talked about the difference between a good salesman and a bad salesman. I know I've told the story a thousand times, but it's such a good story. He says that a bad salesman will make a few phone calls and get rejected a couple of times. And then he'll go drink his lunch because he's depressed. A good salesman will make a couple of phone calls. He'll get rejected a few times and he'll go make a good... Uh, make him a big cup of coffee and then sit down and say, next, here I go. I know I'm getting closer and closer to that sale because it's a numbers game. So if you're grinding it out and it feels like you're not really getting anywhere, but you're doing a really good job following the process. I saw Linda Rasky speak a while back and she talked about someone who had a trading system. And I think it was a little bit more mechanical. And at the end of each day, he didn't say how much money did he, did we make? He said, how much, how well did we follow the process? So again, if you're following the process and grind it out, then even if you have a few losers, you're getting closer and closer to the next big winners. If you are profitable overall, then you are successful. And that's why I'm saying that breaking even is underrated. You do wanna to work to get better and better and better and possibly become a little bit more selective study the market, study the market, study the market, just say, you know what, this market has just chopped sideways, I'm a trend follower, I better take only the F yeah setups until this market begins to take off again. I'm looking at a bunch of crypto, okay, for example, and there's only a few pairs that are rallying, or, or you go to uh, my new favorite tool, I've got it on this monitor over here, is uh, CryptoBubbles.net. I just love this little thing, the stupid little bubbles that show you all the crypto. I think I showed it in one of my presentations a while back we could pull it up here in a minute live and and that's kind of like a cool little tool to show you what's going on and when that thing is solid red you know it's not a good time to be playing that relative strength trading now if it's red you got a couple of really nice green ones in there maybe pullback playing might be worth worth uh, worth a shot and that's the reason why i keep coming back to crypto even though i have tiny amounts of money in crypto i think it's a a, a great way to learn how to trade without blowing through a whole bunch of money yes it's risky but as i've said before us older guys who have been around a little while we understand money management we know that bull markets don't come around every day you got to make hay when the sun shines and then you have to sit on your hands a lot all those things that i preach and again those cycles happen so fast there you can run through it but anyway the point i was trying to make there is if you go back and look and the screens are red over a period, or you're, you're, you've got a, a big blue arrow going sideways, then you're like, aha, I'm a trend guy, it's going sideways, let me get more and more selective. 